The Alaskan Malamute is the Clydesdale of the Great White North. But did you know that the Malamute can survive in temperatures reaching 70 degrees below zero? And that George Lucas was inspired by his faithful Malamute to create Han Solo's companion, Chewbacca. His Malamute, named Indiana, lent his name to another famous character, Indiana Jones. It's a dog that has been bred to get along very well with other dogs in its pack. The ancestors of the Alaskan Malamute were first discovered working alongside the native people of Alaska in the 1700s. These hardy dogs lived with their masters in the inhospitable Arctic. The Malamutes used their dogs to hunt and to nimbly pull heavy sleds over treacherous ice and snow. Explorer Admiral Byrd brought teams of Malamutes to Antarctica on his expedition to the South Pole in 1933. Alaskan Malamutes are often mistaken for another sledding breed, the Siberian Husky, because they share the same coat colors, but that's where the similarities end. Plain and simple, you've got your Huskies that are pulling the dog sleds and are winning the races, and you've got your Malamutes that are really doing the hard work and pulling the heavy stuff. They're a little bit slower, they're quite a bit bigger, but they're an amazing dog. The Malamute dwarfs other sledding dogs with its massive size, commonly weighing between 75 and 100 pounds. The weight comes from its large, dense bone structure and heavy muscling. The broad chest pushes against the harness, and the large rear muscles of the leg drive the animal forward. The Alaskan Malamute could go on forever. It's tireless, it's effortless, and it's what they love to do. The Alaskan Malamute is particularly suited to withstand the harsh, cold climate. <laughs> Black pigmentation is common to all Arctic animals. It prevents sunburn and blistering from the strong ultraviolet rays that glare off the ice. The coat of the Malamute also protects it from the elements. The oily top coat wicks away moisture and traps warm air within the insulating woolly undercoat. But its greatest assets are its bear-like paws. The claws extend out like a cat's to grip the ice. And the broad pads act like snowshoes spreading the weight across a greater surface area to keep them from sinking into the snow. Bred to work in a pack, the Alaskan Malamute gets along well with other dogs and within all types of families. But as with any dog, Malamutes should never be left unsupervised with young children. Are you smiling? Like other large breeds, Malamutes are prone to hip dysplasia. They are a dog because of their massive size that does oftentimes suffer from growing pains or joint pains. And they really don't physically mature until they're usually about two years old. Their oily top coat helps repel dirt as well as moisture. Like a cat, they'll lick themselves clean. Seasonally, the Malamute will blow its coat. That's a slang term or a reference term in grooming for when it releases its undercoat and guard hairs. This is part of nature's way of growing in new hair. You will see patches just start to fall out as the dog walks around. It turns your home into a snow globe. Malamutes are best suited for cold temperatures. In hot and humid climates, they require special attention, shade, and air conditioning to stay healthy and comfortable. This is a dog that is built for the great rugged outdoors. Definitely a working breed. Oh, I love him too. Is it doing? So in general, Alaskan Malamutes prosper in cool climates with plenty of exercise. They're prone to joint problems. Malamutes shed seasonally and require frequent brushing. A stubborn and independent breed, they require continuous training. Malamutes are excellent for active families. Consistent exercise and consistent love will give you many years of love from an Alaskan Malamute.